Okay, so three great games in the PWHL this past weekend, and since it's a little late for highlights, as if you don't know who won, I decided what I'm going to do is look through the gameplay and examine all six teams. Since we did have all six in action, we had Minnesota visiting in Toronto, Boston and Montreal, and we had Ottawa playing New York for the first time. So I'm going to give you my impressions of the teams based on these games and where they're heading as we get into the rivalry series and European series break. Now, I haven't exactly hidden the fact that I am cheering for Toronto. I'd like to see them get up on a bit of a roll. And with Minnesota visiting, what better chance to show that they've really turned the corner? Minnesota has the superstar Taylor Heisey, who right now has three goals and three assists. They actually have four players ranked inside the top 11 in league scoring going into this. Grace Sumwinkle with eight points, and Taylor Heisey, Kelly Panic, and Lee Steckline, each with six points in their eight games. Meanwhile, on the Toronto side, so happy to see Victoria Bach make her debut. She's finished up her studies at Teachers College and has signed a contract to be activated. This balances out the line so much better. You've basically got that Team Canada top line with Malte moved up. Sarah Nurse drops down to the third line to play center. But overall, this looks better balance, better familiarity. And against Minnesota, they showed that they really want it as Sarah Nurse had a huge chance in front and just couldn't bury it. Seeing her make an impression is just a good sign all around. And another player who's been good for Toronto is Maggie Connor. She's been elevated in the lineup. She's shown a lot of offensive skill, a big game in Montreal for them. Sarah Nurse did score her first goal in the PWHL against Minnesota, and she looked like she had another one here. Just roofed it with a little bit of interference there from the D. Connors popped it out to Nurse, and she knows she could have buried that one. And here's the bright spot for Toronto. From day one, it's been Natalie Spooner doing what she does, digging in the corners, making things happen. She scored two goals in their last game, the 2-0 win against New York. And she's ready to match up with Taylor Heisey, Minnesota's superstar. Now, Minnesota's no slouch. They're going to get their chances, but it looks like Toronto's adjusted their D-zone coverage a lot better, preventing those wide-open chances. And speaking of defense, there's our favorite shootout winner, Lorianne Rougeau, up in the play, playing offense, showing that she has more dimensions to her game. Lee Steckline has shown early on that she's just a force. She's not only the penalty minute leader, but a couple of goals have been scored when she launches it from the point or, as she did here, moved in and got a good shot off. Now, not forgetting that Toronto's had its goaltending issues and Kristen Campbell, with a shutout in her last game, is looking to build on that. She also had that great shootout victory where she stopped Marie-Philippe Poulin. So overall, things are trending positively for Toronto. Now, putting those Boston University trio together with Bach, Leslie and Comfer looks like it's going to click. Leslie with some great stick handling. It just looks like chemistry overall and confidence for players has become a big plus. And in this game, we noted that Minnesota and Toronto were towards the bottom with less than 5% proficiency on the power play. Kind of strange with the talent they put out there. But it's got to be a systems thing, and I think it'll get better as the season goes along. Now Spooner and Nurse are killing penalties, and towards the end of this kill, Spooner still has the energy to get in and get a chance. She's just got energy to burn. Another player I've been watching closely is Renata Fast, and she looks like she's cleaned up a lot of her defensive play. She and The Rock look like their old selves a lot more. They shut down the top line of Minnesota in this game. Hannah Miller there draws a penalty, and Toronto goes to a power play, but not much happening there, although they do get some good chances, but this jailbreak rule kind of has teams playing a little more cautiously. There's Leslie with Bach, and Spooner gets to the front of the net. What would we do without her? 
She's this is makes her third goal in a row that she scored. And it's a typical Spooner goal. She goes hard to the net, doesn't get it right away, but stays there, digs out the rebound, and just pots it home. She's strong in front, she's hard to contain, and she's fast. So there it is, six goals on the season. So the game starts to look like it's really in Toronto's favor. Spooner's still all over it, Malte. Blair Turnbull looks like she's getting closer and closer every game. That's some um, foreshadowing if you haven't seen the result. And there's LaRock with that physical play. If she and Fast can be a shutdown pair, that's well worth it. And there's Steckline, just a pro's pro at this point. You know, it's been really fun watching players that you know are good, but as you see them game in and game out and see those small plays they make, you really start to appreciate their skills. Nurse just looks a lot more like herself. She's playing looser. Maybe the All-Star game helped with that. Malte is just going to be a fireball doing what she does, killing penalties. There's Renata Fast with the typical Renata Fast sort of slippy giveaway. Crashing the net, but Campbell stays solid. She looks much better. She's playing a little bit further out from her net. Now, where would we be without controversy? Here's a goal that had some. As LaRock was clearly bumped out of her lane and had a right to that spot. So, in goes Kendall Coyne Schofield. It's a nice goal, but the fact remains that the defender was pretty much knocked out of the play there by Boreen, and so there's one less player as they go to the net, and everybody's looking around like, why is there no call there? But the goal is allowed to stand. And we've seen definitely some controversial goals in Montreal games with overtime goals overturned or not overturned. Ottawa wanting to protest goals. Loose pucks, blown whistles where goals don't count. It's affected the results, to be honest, but hopefully it all shakes out in the end where if a team loses a game based on a bad call, they also get a call in their favor. I really like Tapani's game, and there's Campbell and the Toronto D just cleaning it up. Kava gets erased there by Renata Fast, so again, that D pair is looking more like themselves. And her partner, LaRock, says, well, hey, I'm just going to go back down here behind the net and make things happen. Nurse covers for her at the point as she should. Gets a good shot off. Scramble there. And Hannah Miller. But no, ran out of fast. And I said I wasn't going to do play-by-play. -play, but that play was awesome. Just hard work all around. Starts with a good save by Campbell. Goes to the other end. Nurse with a shot. Bounces out to Hannah Miller. And that's the first goal for Renata Fast, so a big weight off her shoulders, and that's a theme for this team. I know I'm concentrating on the team in blue, but let's face it, they've been at the bottom in the basement, and there's a lot of relief right now on these faces of these players that are working so hard. She's such a leader. She's such a great player. First goal of the season, get that puck, give it to Renata after she made that great physical play, got back up into it. Hensley made two, three saves, so no blame for her. She's been really good this year. And watch this play. Malte off the face off. Whoop! Almost goes in. You can tell that was a play that they drew up. And look who's in the middle of it all. Spooner. There's Tapani saying, get out of here. We're tired of you. But she might have a little more to, to say in this game. That's such a cool play by Malte, and she's well-deserving, I think, of being on the top line. You saw M Melissa Channel there. She was actually cut by Toronto in the preseason and joined Minnesota. There she is, the style, the fit of Natalie Spooner. We go into the third period, and it looks like the role players on Toronto, like Flanagan here, have had a good game. Things are starting to fall into place. They're still on the power play as this uh, third period begins, and the shots are 
pretty even. Minnesota slightly out shooting them. Natalie Spooner gets involved again. There's a collision, panic is down, but guess what? She's the one going to the penalty box because she took down Spooner. You know, I was okay when I thought Spooner might be the second overall draft pick, but they got her in the fourth round for the reason of the compassion circumstances. Um, it wasn't well publicized, but those players that were granted that status were basically drafted in a position that the league um, deemed appropriate. So that's why she went in the fourth round. She was only available to be drafted by Toronto. Just a fun fact for you. Now there's our favorite pair again, 14-3. and three. Clears the zone with a beauty pass. There she is again, digging it out. Spooner and over to Turnbull. I got a sigh of relief. The crowd knows who that is. That's the captain who's been working hard and a beautiful bass by Spooner. Like she said, that's not an easy place. Uh, Turnbull goes to the net, backhands it up and over. And they're getting the feeling that we might just get the three points out of this one. It's three to one. Eight minutes left. There have been some comebacks, but Toronto's really determined in this game. And the, shortly afterwards, it only took about 20 seconds. Jocelyn the Rock. Hensley's saying, what the heck? It's at number 24 again. Goes back to the Rock, sends the shot in, and it's deflected. Spooner just is almost in disbelief herself, but... She does these little things so well, and the team needs it so badly. Congratulations to her. And there's a look at the goal again. Turnbull with her arms in the air. She's like, I am on the board. Forget the assist. I've got the goal. Credit, credit to Fast, LaRock, Spooner, Malte. Comfer, Leslie, Victoria Bach making a huge difference, and don't forget Kristen Campbell. I'll take back some of the criticism I was giving her. A job well done by this team. And Minnesota has been slipping ever so slightly. This is their second uh, regulation loss. But they did collect points in an overtime loss to Boston and an overtime win against New York. So they are still at the top of the league standings as they just pick up points and that's necessary. This loss is going to sting but they're going into that rivalry series break. They'll get a chance to kind of readdress some of their issues and probably come back strong. I can't see keeping Taylor Heisey off the scoreboard for too many more games. But it's all Toronto today, so let's just celebrate. I'm gonna put on my blue sweatshirt. There's Turnbull saying it is a relief, kind of a goal that I'm used to scoring. Trying to change my game to get a goal, so I think me driving the net and having a little shot tip from Spooner—that's a pretty classic goal of mine. Feels good, a good win for Toronto.